Welcome to part two of a two-part series entitled Venerated Sufi Saint Rabia of Basra, Vegan, The Bliss and Pleasure of Divine Love. Born around the year 717 AD in Basra, a seaport city in southern Iraq, Hasrat Rabia al Adawiya al Kasiya, widely known as Rabia al Basri, was one of foremost spiritual influences in the Islamic world. Rabia, meaning fourth, was the fourth daughter of an underprivileged but highly respected family. Although Rabia did not leave any written works by herself, she is revered and beloved for her faith, piety, and patience, and is considered to be the first female Sufi saint of Islam. After spending some time at a Sufi hermitage, Hasrat Rabia began a seven-year walk to Mecca to complete the pilgrimage known as the Hajj for the love of Allah. There is no doubt that Hasrat Rabia held a strong faith and relied solely on Allah. According to a legend, she traveled to Mecca with the assistance of a skinny person from the Donkey Kingdom together with her few possessions. In the middle of the desert, the donkey person passed away. The people accompanying her offered to help transport her bags, but she declined, saying, Go on your way, for I must not depend upon you for help, but I trust myself to Allah. In her challenging situation, she prayed to God, and the donkey person came back to life and carried Rabia on her journey to Mecca. It was documented that at one time, when Rabia was on her way to Mecca, she saw the Kaaba before her, which the Muslims consider the house of God. She said, It is the Lord of the house whom I need. What have I to do with the house? I need to meet with him who said, Who approaches me by a span's length, I will approach him by the length of a cubit. The Kaaba which I see has no power over me. What does the Kaaba bring to me? There is no evidence that Rabia received formal instruction in Sufism. However, according to Lebanese writer and critic Widat El Sakakini, Rabia was likely to have received guidance from Basra Sufi circles at an early age and played a reed pipe or flute. Sufis believed that the sound of the flute helps assist in attaining God's consciousness. This style of music was fundamental to the early Sufi movements, some of which are still active today. Hasrat Rabia was considered to be the first Sufi teacher in her own right and attracted many disciples as her fame grew. It was widely accepted that she achieved self-realization and unity with the divine truth. Unlike many Sufi saints, Rabia did not learn from a master or teacher but turned to God himself. Hasrat Rabia devoted her whole life to God, practicing absolute asceticism and self-denial. It is said that her only possessions were a mat, a brick as a pillow, and a broken jug. She would spend all night in prayer, contemplation, and reciting the Quran. Rabia also taught the concept of divine love. She explained that God should not be loved out of fear, but should be loved for God's own sake. 
Widat El Sakakini mentions, Hasrat Rabia was the first to explain the higher love in Islamic Sufism. Hasrat Rabia taught that repentance is a gift from God to those who believe in her and love her. She herself loved God unconditionally. Emotions like hope and fear are hindrances to God realization. She would pray daily, O oh Allah, if I worship you for fear of hell, burn me in hell. And if I worship you in hope of paradise, exclude me from paradise. But if I worship you for your own sake, grudge me not your everlasting beauty. Rabia received many offers for marriage, including one from Hassan al-Basri, a famous Islamic theologian. But she turned them all down to devote her whole life to achieving the divine truth and not be distracted by her love for any man. She would respond by saying she was already married to Allah. She was once asked if she hated Satan. Hazrat Rabia replied, My love to God has so possessed me that no place remains for loving or hating any save Him. According to University of Cambridge Professor Dr. Margaret Smith, author of The Way of the Mystics, The Early Christian Mystics and the Rise of the Sufis, in a little desert cell not far from Basra, Rabia started her monastic life. There she immersed herself in prayer and went directly to God for instruction. She was one of the earliest Sufis to preach that the only route to mysticism was one of love. Rabia was once asked where she came from, to which she replied, from that other world, and that was where she was also going. She thought that the spirit originated in that other world and had to return to God in the end. If the soul is purified, it could look upon God revealed in all Hirsus glory and unite with Herm. Rabia of Basra is mentioned in Islamic sources as being vegan. According to rope vegan author Dr. Gabriel Cousins in his book, Conscious Eating, from a chapter on vegetarianism in Islam, vegetarianism is deeply rooted in Sufism as an essential step toward spiritual development. Animal people would frequently be present while Hazrat Rabia meditated in the woods. One day, a disciple approached her, and the animal friends fled. He was upset that they had run away from him and sought Hasrat Rabia's opinion. She asked him what he had eaten that day. When he admitted to eating some animal people fat, Rabia explained that the citizens of the animal kingdoms run away from those who eat their flesh. Another story of Hasrat Rabia tells when Hassan al-Basri saw her near a lake, he threw his prayer rock on top of the water, saying, Rabia, come, let us pray here. She replied, Hassan, when you are showing off your spiritual goods in the worldly market, it should be things which your fellow men cannot display. She then threw her own prayer rock into the air and flew up onto it. She then told him, Come up here, Hassan, where people can see us. 
Seeing Hassan's sadness, Rabia consoled him, saying, Hassan, what you did, fishes can do, and what I did, flies can do. But the real business is outside these tricks. One must apply oneself to the real business. According to Imam Ibn al-Juzi, a prominent Muslim teacher, just before her departure from her earthly existence, Rabia ordered her personal attendant, Abda bint Abi Shawal, not to disclose any information regarding her passing. Her humble request that she be shrouded only in an old gown known as Juba for burial was faithfully complied with by her attendant. Her favorite cloak was draped over her body. She ordered the others to rise and make way for the prophets of God. They immediately rose and left the room. A voice was heard saying, O soul at peace, return unto thy Lord. Well pleased, Rabia passed away around the age of 80. She is a valued role model for Muslim women. Both men and women of the Islamic faith conferred high praise on Rabia as a guide to the realization of God. Her legacy has a significant impact on religious life and thought. Even though she had never taught at a prestigious nor established institution. We now close today's program with Hasrat Rabia's poem entitled Love. Love, I have loved thee with two loves, a selfish love and a love that is worthy of thee. As for the love which is selfish, therein I occupy myself with thee, to the exclusion of all others. But in the love which is worthy of thee, thou dost raise the veil that I may see thee. Yet is the praise not mine in this or that, but the praise is to thee in both that and this. <laughs> 